Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to do a recipe that we first did on the channel back in 2008. Um, I will link to that below. Julie is actually the person cooking um, this recipe in 2008. So this comes from my grandmother. This was, uh, this was a bun recipe, a dinner roll recipe that she made constantly. If uh, people were sitting down to the table to have dinner, these buns were on the table. And I learned to make it from her, watching her, with her instructions. Um, but she was the kind of cook that didn't measure anything. She had a spoon, and she'd scoop some things, and away she'd go. And she just knew what it was supposed to look and feel like at every step of the way. And I learned this from her. Um, and I've tried to translate that into measurements, but some of it you're just going to have to trust that you can make it happen. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it too much. Everything is going to be fine. So I've got some body temperature water in this in this little beaker here, and I put in some yeast, and I just stirred that around. She always let her yeast bloom. I now use a yeast that I don't bloom it anymore. I just throw it in with the flour and would throw everything in all at once. But it's a good idea, best practice, to bloom it in some water. Instant yeast. Um, will not bloom in milk. So here I have some slightly warmer than body temperature milk. To that I'm going to add butter. Um, I'll just break it up a little bit more so that it melts faster. In it goes, and it doesn't have to melt completely. And to that I've got an egg. The egg can go into the milk as well. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a bit of a stir. If you wanna get a whisk out and whisk it, go ahead. Uh, but you don't have to, and you don't really have to mix up the egg too much, and you don't have to worry if the butter doesn't completely melt into the milk. None of those things are concerned because it's all gonna get mixed together in the mixer. So um, it is a very forgiving recipe. Um, you can make a multitude of errors, and it works out, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. So in here I have three cups of flour, just all-purpose flour. I've got half a cup of flour in this bowl. One of the vagaries of cooking or baking or making bread like this is that you need to have a little bit of flour to mix in later if it's too sticky. Um, yes, weighing it would change all of that, but where's the fun in that? So to the flour I'm going to add some sugar. These are a slightly sweet dinner roll. Absolutely amazing. Um, and I've got some salt, and that can just go in with the flour. Just give that a bit of a mix. You can just use your hand. Don't worry too much about it. Now, all of the liquid just goes in. So this is our water and yeast mixture. And the milk. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, don't worry. You can do this completely with a wooden spoon and your hands and knead it by hand. Do this initial mixing step with a wooden spoon and then knead it by hand. You don't have to have a stand mixer. But since I have a stand mixer, I'm gonna use it. Now, this first part is just to mix it together into kind of a ragged dough ball. So I just let the dough hook pull it all together until I get something that looks like this. Now, I just walk away for 20 minutes. I let that sit in the mixing bowl, uncovered, just the way it is, 20 minutes, and then I knead it. I got sidetracked. It'll be fine. Uh, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. As long as it rests, you're gonna be fine. And I've got this kind of sticky, doughy, foamy mass in there. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on. And just by the way the dough is acting in here, I know that I'm going to need at least a spoonful of flour. So, I'm going to put in a spoonful of flour. And I can tell that I need a second one. So, I'm going to put in a second one, and I think that should be fine. Now, I'm going to let the machine go and knead for about 10 minutes. And at about the five minute mark, I'm going to look at it again. And the ball of dough should be pulling away from the sides of the bowl 
and it should be a well-defined ball, just barely. If you see that it's not, and that it's sort of, you've got this mass in the middle, and then it spreads out up along the sides of the ball, and it's not pulling into a ball, add another scoop of flour. See how it's stuck just along the side of the bowl here? And I know that everyone out there who is a proponent of weighing your ingredients, that baking is a scientific method with a formula that you absolutely have to follow. Baking is more of an art. It really is more of an art. And I'm using Canadian all-purpose flour. And even if I gave you the weights and you're in the southern United States or you're in Europe or you're you know, somewhere else in the world, the protein content of your flour is going to be different. Um, the amount that your flour is milled, so how fine it is, is going to be different. And those things add a variable that even weighing can't take into account. The best bread bakers I've ever met treated it like an art. They knew what was going on in the bowl. They learned how to make it in the, how to make it. They learned how to make it, what it should taste like, what it should feel like. I'll link to another video down below um, that I shot, I think in 2007 or maybe 2008 in Nepal. Um, I was doing a job on Everest and on the walk up to Everest, I came across a bakery in a town called Namche Bazaar. Not much of a town, more of a widening of the path. Namche Bazaar. And I filmed with those guys baking bread. Watch that. Everything was done by feel. And so that, to me, is what it should look like. It's just barely pulling away from the sides, a little bit of sticking. We've got a nice defined ball that's starting to come together and kneading. So I'm going to let that knead for a total of about 10 or 12 minutes. Then I'm going to take it off of the stand mixer. I'm going to leave it in this bowl, just the way it is in this bowl. I'm going to put a cover on it and I'm gonna let it stand at room temperature for about an hour until it doubles in bulk. Okay, an hour has gone by, and I would say that's more than doubled in size. Now, again, for people who deal in absolutes, who look at recipes and think that the timings are all in absolutes, they're not. An hour is just a guideline. Um, it's quite warm in the studio today. I put the heater on, forgot about it. It's up over 30 degrees Celsius in here now. So, quite warm, got a good rise. If your kitchen is a little cooler, it may take longer. If your kitchen is really hot, it might take less time. Like I probably could have come back to this at 40 minutes and, and pulled it out. So, let's get it out on the bench. And this is a really good looking dough. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it turned out well. So I've got this buttered glass baking dish and I wanna cut roughly 16 buns to put in here. I'm gonna put them all in there. So, um, and if you wanna get out a scale and be completely exact, go right ahead. So there, I cut it in half. Cut it in half again. Cut each of those in half or roughly half. And I've chosen 16 because 16 is relatively easy. 15 would probably be better because then I could have five rows of three and it would fill the pan much nicer. Um, and that is something that if you weigh it out, if you're the person who weighs, you can go right ahead and do that. Now, there's a couple of ways to shape it. You can take the ball in your hand and pull them over into the back side, pinching it on the back side which stretches a nice ball on the front or the top. That is one way to do it. That is a great way to do it. That's not the way that I do it. So you'll notice there's no flour on my bench. So I can take the dough ball and cup it in my hands and essentially roll it around on the bench. And there you go. I get a nice dough ball, maybe a little bit more than that. And so not having any flour on the bench top means that the dough sticks. And so when you get your fingers underneath it, how am I gonna shoot this? Get your fingers underneath it and you pull it back, it sticks to the countertop and it really stretches out the top. So I'm gonna put that one in the dish. So there's a ball of dough. 
cup your hands around it and roll. And when you pull back, your fingers are underneath and you're adding a little bit of pressure on the top and it sticks to the countertop. And you can do it one-handed if you want, if you find that's easier. But it's, as you pull it back, it sticks. And then as you push it forward, it sticks. And that pulls the top. Okay, so there you go. 15 not quite perfectly shaped dinner rolls. I'm just gonna cover that with a tea towel and sit it aside. And I know that probably 45 minutes from now, they'll be ready to go into the oven. So I've got the oven up to 350 degrees. It's already hot. I'll see you back here in about 45 minutes. So somehow this became a crossover episode. Got a lot going on in the kitchen today. So the buns have risen, risen pretty nicely. Um, they filled up, they've doubled in size essentially. Oven is preheated to 350 degrees. These go in for about 20 minutes, but the real way to tell if they're done, if you can't tell, is with an instant read thermometer, they should read at least 190 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of the bun. That's when they're done. Okay, there we go. That's over 190. The buns are done, so they come out. And in go the potatoes. Ooh. There we go. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. Granny's buns. Hot. I totally recognize them. Okay. I'm assuming. They are. I, okay, so I laugh because anytime we go to a family function on Glenn's side, if they show up like this, are those Granny's buns, Glenn? Granny's are those buns. Glenn's? Are those Granny's buns? Those are Granny's buns. And then they're gone as everyone comes by and rips one off long before it's actually mealtime. So they're just pull apart. And oh, that's a good looking bun. That's a good looking bun. Okay, so. Are we going to crack that open? Yeah, crack that open. They're still hot. They still, Ooh. they just came out of the oven. They're, they're great buns, but they're really meant to be eaten. Today. Today, right out of the oven. They're not, they're not meant for tomorrow or the next day. Mm. Not great. It's so great. Slather. Then you slather with a little bit of butter. Butter and oh, goodness. Goodness. Okay, so right when you take them out of the oven, a little bit of melted butter and a brush and brush it over top. I oh, didn't do that we today. We totally didn't even wait. <laughs> I know. I didn't do that today, but you just brush it over. It just gives a nice glaze and makes them look really nice. My grandmother would little sprinkle sugar. some sugar on top as well. Um, I didn't do that today either because, you know, I don't think I need the sugar and butter on top. <laughs> But those are fantastic buns. Now, it is an art form. Watch the video from 2008. You'll notice that we've changed some of the method because that's, I don't know, what is that, 15 years ago? I don't know. That's I a long time ago. I didn't know what you said for the starting 2008. Day. 2008? That was the, that's the first time we did it on video, but I've done it my yeah. entire life. It evolves over time. You play with it. It's an art form. Don't worry about screwing it up. Get up, dust yourself off, and try again. They're a great dinner roll. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. <laughs>